In almost unprecedented behavior, just about everybody's sick of NBA 2K21 current gen. And it's about two months into the game's launch. There's a lot to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all are new to the channel, you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. We do this daily. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. More on them a little later. Subscribe to the channel though if y'all wanna see more NBA 2K21 content. Next gen is two weeks away. Hey, let's be honest with each other. We all kind of knew this was gonna happen. Just about everybody I talked to that got NBA 2K21 current gen thought to themselves, it'll do for two months. That's basically what this version of the game was. I feel like if a lot of people judged the game based off how fun it would be over the course of a year, it'd be a very, very different conversation. Cause they just didn't do it, they didn't, I didn't. Mm. And on top of that, there was some, uh, we could call unforeseen circumstances that resulted in the early demise of the game. I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, these new Zens, you can't go into to the stage, you can't play any kind of reasonable competitive game without somebody using a modded controller. And it's so obvious to tell when it's happening now and it's such a shame that there's been at no point so far during what's been going on, this has been addressed. Interestingly enough, it actually was in the last patch notes, it was supposed to have been addressed, but then it wasn't, and then we just didn't hear nothing else about it, ever. So this is where we are now, we're two, three weeks away from the next gen launch of NBA 2K21. We don't even know when we're gonna get the next gen consoles, cause let's be honest guys, they're gonna be backed up. I don't care how much PlayStation Xbox tries to ensure me that it's gonna happen on launch day, there's gonna be plenty of people that get there days after, maybe Maybe even a week after launch. And it's how you know you're in the middle of a new cycle because 2K is back to updating everybody on their overalls. You look on their Twitter page, they just drop in overalls for all these NBA players. We've been through this circuit before. Okay, but 2K, I would like to address the remainder of the video to you because current gen, I don't think nobody really cared. Personally, I didn't care, but I don't think nobody truly cared. But for next gen, I think everybody cares. Kind of like 2K14 on the PS4, graphically huge step up, even in terms of gameplay huge step up from NBA 2K13 on the PS3. We're expecting to see the same thing this year. No one's expecting marginal improvements. We're all expecting not just a brand new game, but for our minds to be blown with next gen possibilities. That's what I'm telling you to be a fact. But amidst all of that, because we don't know what those details are yet, I'm gonna present a counter argument as per se. Per so, per such. Man, why did nobody ever talk about simple quality of life stuff that 2K needs to improve? The stuff that would make your life playing the game better, but it wouldn't be big enough for you to purchase the game over it. That stuff. The stuff that's important because it frustrates you when it's done incorrectly, but when it's done correctly, you don't even think about it because it's making your life easier. Like when I changed the settings on NBA 2K21 for my shot stick, for example, and they just never stick. And so every time I get into the game, I have to change my settings all over again, 2K. The fact that if I'm in a prime arena, I have to leave that prime arena so I could change a dribble move, and then I have to rejoin the prime arena, but then, Guys, I'm not gonna be in the same prime arena as the rest of my teammates. Now all of my teammates have to leave and rejoin. Quality of life stuff, 2K. The fact that I can't click the, where my, where my controller? If I click start, I should then be able to click square and mute everybody in the lobby. I shouldn't have to mute everybody individually. There should be a button to mute all. I don't think this is gonna happen and maybe I'm spoiled because I've been playing a lot on PC the past few years, but there needs to be like graphic settings as well. You know, detailed graphic settings to give me the option. Do I want to play on 30 frames or 60 or do I wanna play 120 frames? You know what I'm saying? Personally me, I prefer more frames. I prefer better performance than graphics, personally. Not everyone's gonna be like that, but that's fine. But graphical setting options would be a good change. Especially if you guys don't properly optimize the game, you know what I'm saying, and the game starts skipping and lagging like it's been doing for the past, how long's the game? 21 years now. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, they obviously didn't have online the first bunch of years. I, I've seen this recommended a few times on Twitter and I 100% agree. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that, cause I think NBA Live 06 had this. Up until NBA Live 10, they had this. We should be able to preload into our preferred game mode. If I'm a my team player, when NBA 2K21 next gen boots up, I would like to just be plopped in my team. There needs to be a setting where I could choose the mode. It could be my core, I would like to just be plopped in my my core. Maybe you wanna plop in the into the park, into your my career. It it doesn't matter, but that would be nice. For example, in NBA Live 10, there was literally an option. When you first get into the game, you, you get into like this big practice arena. 
and the practice arena was populated by NBA All-Stars. So you're controlling LeBron, and you can change your user by just clicking a button, and now you're controlling Dwayne Wade, and you can just shoot around with whoever, and whenever you are done just chilling, you can go into the menu and then do what you want. Stuff like that, 2K. Stuff like that just makes the whole process of booting up the game and then getting into what you actually want to play what way infinitely more enjoyable. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a reliable home security system that makes sure you're safe at home. For some reason, security is one of those things where everyone just waits for something to go wrong before they take it seriously. And we did the same thing here at this house. We just waited for something to go wrong and it did three, four months ago before we finally took it seriously. Because you're not always gonna have a recurve bolt to protect you at home. I want to shoot an arrow so badly, you have no idea. The point I'm trying to make is that I realize a recurve bow just isn't enough. <laughs> ah! So the process is pretty simple. You order everything online, everything you need will be shipped to your house, and you could set it all up yourself in under an hour. Now the base and the hub we put at the very front of the house, and that's what kind of connects the entire security system together. We installed the smart lock onto both the front and the back door of the house. We have all kind of different sensors and cameras around the house so we know what's going on at all times. Now with Simply Safe, we have 24-7 professional monitoring, so if anything does go wrong, the authorities get called. Top link in the description, man. And on the screen right now, simplysafe.com slash agent zero zero. And instead of getting yourself a recurve bow, you can make the smart decision and get yourself a reliable security system. <laughs> it's a huge shout out to Simply Safe for helping sponsor this video. Now let's get back into it. This I've said, mm -mm, I've said this to developers years ago and, it, and maybe they tried to address it and they just failed miserably. But what's good with game chat? Why is game chat quality so god awful? It's so sad because if I'm playing Valorant and I'm using this mic right here, guys, people actively tell me maybe every three games I get in because this is a really, really good mic, I hear, whoa, what the hell, dude? Your mic is incredible. I hear that all the time when I'm playing games. But it doesn't matter what mic you have on 2K. It could be the most incredible mic. It could be the most garbage mic. It does not matter. It's going to sound like a tin can. And I feel like that shouldn't be a hard fix just based off the fact that no other game I play sounds that bad. And while it's not a deal breaker, from time to time when I'm having a good chat with the person from the other team, it'd be nice if another person doesn't turn on their mic, blasting NBA young boy, just tearing my eardrums apart. Uh, th there's been like three, four years straight where uh, 2K thought it was acceptable to not fix the people walking all over the court glitch. And you know what I'm saying? First day of NBA 2K21 current gen. Don't know how it happened, but they let me just walk all over stage courts. I glitched out of the map by accident. I didn't even know how I did it. It was on day one, guys. And this has been a problem going on for as long as I can remember, when people load into the anti up, they're, they're in the middle court. They were sprint on the spot on the middle court. You can't even play on the middle court. It's quality of life stuff, guys. Quality of life. Eat simple stuff. When I pull out my phone in game, why is it so laggy? I have to wait three seconds before I click a button. And when I click a button, there's like a 500 millisecond delay from when it moves. It's like a goddamn uh, Motorola Razor. They got us using prehistoric phones. 2K, this is simple stuff. It should be silky smooth. Yo, recently, for the first time, I think in ever, when I was playing the PC version of NBA 2K21 current gen, I actively had frame skips and lag in the menu, guys. It's gotten to the point where the menu is now laggy. Because cheating seems to be an ongoing and increasingly larger and larger problem, there needs to be a better reporting system, a simple one, where I could just find someone, and if they did something that went against TOS, like maybe they had some race on their shirt, or maybe, uh, maybe they have a Zen, maybe they got some cheating code, who knows? You should be able to just click square or something on their name and then report them. It should be as simple as that. And the one thing that uh, Mike Wang did mention on TikTok that's gonna be addressed and it's simple quality of life stuff is load times. I know 2K has gotten a lot better at that already. 2K18 load times made you wanna jump out of the nearest skyscraper. They've gotten better without a shadow of a doubt. And they're, the game is considerably more convenient now than it was three years ago, facts. But still, there is a lot of loading time between when you go to park events and now you wanna to go to the park, you wanna back out and go to the, my team. It's like, you're gonna be sitting there for minutes just looking at screens before you get to where you wanna go. Now they got the new solid state drive technology. It's so sad, by the way, that I have to say that because PC gamers is not new. We've been doing it for like eight, nine years now. Besides the point, guys. <laughs> Uh, the new solid state drive technology is gonna make it so that the load times is way faster. That's great. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't think they should name this next game NBA 2K21. I'm being for real. Do you remember when like four or five years ago Madden named one of their games Madden 25 out of nowhere? I think 2K 
they should do, they should have done something like that this year. Because it's not going to connect to a lot of people that don't really follow the game that heavy. They're going to be like, is it another 2K21? It's going to be the same thing. But I guarantee you it's not going to be the same thing. Because I know that big developers and big publishers got access to the next gen tech a long time ago. So they could start developing games optimized for next generation console gaming. So that being said, a lot of the stuff we should expect to see on NBA 2K21 next gen is not stuff they just started working on last year. It's stuff they started working on way before that. That's why my expectations are so high. Cause I'm like, man, they known of this tech for a while now. So they've had plenty of opportunity to optimize and take advantage of all the new offerings. And the sad part is, is they have not, they have yet to just announce, no, no, that's cap, that's cap. Cause in some of the blog posts, they've mentioned um, like the vibrations when you hit screens is gonna be, uh, but I mean like really though, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Mike White on TikTok said the load time's gonna be less cause the solid state drives, ah, ah, ah. I think we're about like a few days away from 2K finally saying something about my GMI league. <laughs> Hey, we know how this goes. Hey, just for those who are new, we can all help you break this down. We know how this formula is gonna go. They're gonna start with my GM My League news. They might even sprinkle some my team news, even though it seems like my team is gonna be a pretty similar mode. They're gonna transfer over, so it's not gonna be much different on the my team side, I don't think. And then when there's like four days left, they're gonna drop the park news. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it's gonna go. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm excited. And I'm not excited because right now I have zero interest in playing NBA 2K21 current gen. I'm just excited because for the first time in a while, I almost feel like I have a reason to expect something that's going to blow my mind. And I swear sometimes I be losing brain cells online having this type of conversation with people. I saw this tweet, guys, this tweet right here. 2K10 versus next gen 2K21 Steph Curry. Did 2K player graphics change for the better or worse? And then if you look at the two examples, what are we even talking about, guys? How how could how could there be more than one answer to this question? I don't know if that's brain cells, guys. I've lost plenty of brain cells. Yeah, guys, we need console jump, man. Of course you could expect improvements. I saw someone in the comments thought he was mad funny. The real question is, did the gameplay get better or get worse? Man, yo, trust me, I love 2K10, 2K11 gameplay. Those are my first 2Ks I play OD, man. But they did not even have a dribble stick in that game, all right? Did the gameplay feel smooth and responsive and was it fun to play? Yes. Do I also recognize that a lot of the reason why I felt like those games were really goaded was because those were the first ones I played seriously? It's because of franchise fatigue. Some of y'all fantasize about your first 2K like it's the best one. Yo, if y'all if y'all first 2K is 2K17, I have bad news for you. That is very unfortunate, my guys. Because 2K16 was one of the, if not the greatest 2K of all time. You just missed it. And a lot of people just have like, they see like rose colored glasses when it comes to their first 2K. Anyway, besides the point, it's no point in getting into the whole franchise fatigue debate. I think it's pretty unanimously agreed upon that NBA 2K21 current gen is ranked uh, at least one of the lowest 2Ks of all time. A very underwhelming 2K goes without saying. Man, I had a couple people on Twitter try saying it was the worst 2K of all time. And I, I didn't even oppose it in my mind. I, listen, I don't think it's per se 18, but that, that's a conversation worth having. But luckily for us, unlike 2K18, we only had to deal with this one for a couple of months and then we're out. 2K, I have one ask. Cause I came on this channel, man, and for plenty of videos over the f several years, I've been doing this. I've been asking y'all for big ideas. You know what I'm saying? I wanna play in Shanghai. I wanna play in Philly. I wanna play New York rooftops. I wanna play Venice Beach, man. I wanna play in Hoop Dome. I wanna play in Toronto, you know what I'm saying? Hey, champions, you know what I'm saying? Yup, last year, yes sir. But on a side note, and this is the stuff that the real gamers care about and the guys who put hours into the game and who don't wanna be frustrated by just, just simple bug fixes getting in the way of enjoyable experiences. Cause the reality is 2K, not gonna lie to you, there's only a few games that were just like a lost cause. Most 2Ks, all it would've took was a fix, a patch, a few things changed, and the game would've either became playable or very fun, one of the two. So let's let's work on game testing. Let's get these kinks out, quality of life stuff. And if, if the guys you have right now aren't doing that, get some new guys in there that's gonna know how to do that, okay? I get that for a lot of people, the focus when it comes to 2K is balance. Balance and new modes and features and lag and hacking and, but 
quality of life though. Man, probably some of the most overlooked stuff in gaming. It's a shame I've literally never made a video like this to bring light to some of those issues. And really when you get down into the nitty gritty and you play any mode, you're gonna find like infinite problems that just get in the way of you having fun. And it's just like, why did that problem need to exist if there's an easy fix for it, hmm? Anyway, I'm gonna call it on that. Hey, second channel link is in the description. We're almost at 300,000 subscribers, man. So if y'all have not seen the content there, don't miss out. I'm posting there consistently. Aside from that, a &P shoots next couple days, so I'm gonna be busy. Uh, but as soon as those are done, I have a dope video I wanna share with y'all, so y'all can see that. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.